Hi, Julie Jules Cruise Companion. Today I'm sitting in an inside cabin on Carnival Splendor and I cruised out of Sydney for a 10 night cruise to the Pacific Islands. Now people would ask, but you live close to Brisbane. Why didn't you cruise out of Brisbane? Because it would be cheaper and closer proximity. I will explain to you why I made the decision about cruising out of Sydney as opposed to cruising out of Brisbane for almost an identical itinerary. previously done a video of breaking down the cost of this 10 night cruise. So basically I flew to Sydney for $115 and I will fly out of Sydney for $150. The cruise for 10 nights cost me $1,020 and then I had some accommodation the night before which was $160 because I never fly the day of a cruise because that is just an insane thing that only a novice person would do who thinks that they know how to rule the world but in reality it will it'll just set you up for epic failure. I also put into account the um, travel for the Uber to and from the airport, the train to and from the airport to the city. I also put into so with the cruise, the flights, the accommodation and the transport to and from, that gave me a grand total of $1,545. So if I was looking at a similar cruise out of Brisbane, which would have been P&O Pacific Encounter, it only had a seven night itinerary and for an inside cabin for a seven night cruise was going to be $1,600. So just on the face of it, the seven night cruise out of Brisbane and the 10 night cruise out of Sydney were basically the same price by the time that I put in all the other components that was going to get me to the cruise. And then if I add on the additional elements, which was Wi-Fi, drinks, excursions, etc. So my excursions, etc. that I was planning on the 10 night cruise out of Sydney on um, Carnival Splendor. That was going to come to about $867. And if I added and if I compared that to what it would have cost me for the seven nights out of Brisbane, that would have been about $678 if I was using the averages. So if I add both of those up, it would have come to two thousand four hundred and twelve for the carnival out of sydney for 10 nights and two thousand four hundred and two for the seven nights out of brisbane but the advantage of the sydney one was that i had um, a two hundred dollar on board credit so that brought me down to two thousand two hundred and fourteen dollars as opposed to my two thousand four hundred and two dollars for the seven night but then I always take in that dividing it by the nights of the cruise to what is the value for money per day or per night for the cruise so by doing that for the 10 night cruise that gave me an average price of about two hundred and twenty one dollars per night for uh, for the 10 night cruise where it left me dividing the 2,400 by the seven, and that gave me $344 per night for a cruise. So I deemed it was more economical for me to fly to Sydney to have all of these other additional costs as opposed to flying, uh, to driving to Brisbane and parking. Oh, I forgot to mention, I would have had to put parking on for the seven nights and that would have been about $134 if I'd have got into parking one at Wilson's to add that to the cost of the uh, Brisbane cruise. So why did I choose to fly out of Sydney? Because it was actually cheaper per night to give me uh, more nights cruising, same itinerary, four ports as opposed to three ports, 10 nights instead of seven nights. Do your calculations. You just never know what is going to be the best cruise for you. Even as a solo, 
taking into consideration I paid for two people and I would have had to have paid for two people on the P&O cruise as well. This is Julie Jules Cruise Companion saying, come along and cruise everybody. Stay safe and happy cruising. Mm -hmm.